Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQP Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 talking about managing test activities and moving on to the next segment which is 5.2 Risk Management. And as a part of this tutorial, we'll be giving you a quick introduction to what is risk all about and how it can be managed within a life cycle and also look at some of the quick examples related to the project and product risk. Well, when it comes to the risk management, the very first and foremost important thing is to talk about the definition of risk. Risk is an uncertainty which may or may not happen. And if it certainly happens, then it would be having a side effect left out. So we as a project member are someone who is responsible or especially being a QA is responsible to identify or contribute in the identification process and help them to mitigate the risk. However, a risk can be anything related to any part of the application. And then we can classify them based on their identification into two categories, which is project risk and product risk. In simple words, a product risk is anything which is related to the functional and non-functional attributes of the application. So if I have to take an example here, I would prefer to say that if the performance is poor, it is a product risk. People will stop using your product. However, you have released it into the market. Same way, if the user friendliness is not so good, you may just discard the product or probably stop using that product. Or other way, if the weighing machine is not calibrated, is also a product risk. But on the other hand side, if I talk about the things which are the activities which takes place in order to build the product, or if I have any risk associated to that, I would call it as project risk. Because project risks are related to those activities which build the product, and these are pre-release. So, for example, if the requirements are poorly defined, I call it as a project risk. If the resources are insufficient or unskilled, then I call it as a project risk. If the testing is incapable of finding the good defects or quality defects or unable to uh, meet the required requirements, then it is called as a project risk. So anything which deals with the activities, any such risk which deals with the activities or tasks being performed in order to build the product is called as a project risk or related to process, whereas product risk are those which are attributes of the product itself. So in simple words, this is how the definition and classification of defects, the risk happens. Now let's quickly check it out what the risk management introduction is trying to say and at the same time, what is the risk management process altogether. So when it comes to organization, they certainly face many internal and external factors that make it uncertain whether and when they will achieve their objectives. Risk management allows the organization to increase the likelihood of the achieving objectives, improve the quality of their products and increase the stakeholders confidence and the trust. So, of course, risk analysis being conducted in any particular project will give you a lot of heads up that how exactly I can organize and conduct my testing. And indeed, what are those counterparts which I must deal with in order to avoid unforeseen situations or show stoppers or sometimes suspension of the pro projects as well or to avoid the failure of the product into the market. Also to add here the process that is the main risk management activities include risk analysis and risk control. Now here risk analysis is further broken down into two parts that is risk identification and risk assessment and risk control is into risk mitigation and risk monitoring. So in simple words these are four sequential activities which happens as a part of risk management that is first we identify the risk then we deep dive and assess the level of risk then we certainly perform the steps in order to mitigate it and then we consistently keep an eye throughout the life cycle if there are any new risk uh, emerging out of the new data or as the project unfolds or sometimes just to keep a track of anything which may not be any longer a risk. So we have to consistently monitor it as well. So these are the four major phases that is identification, assessment, mitigation and monitoring. The test approach in which the test activities are selected, prioritized and managed based on the risk analysis and risk control is called as risk based testing. However, there are different strategies and approaches available like analytical, methodical, process compliant and so on. But risk based, which is analytical, is one of the commonly used approaches in testing today, where the if you are following risk based approach, all we are trying to say that you are managing your entire test activities related to that, which deals with certainly 
that is selecting your set of activities, prioritizing your test cases and managing everything else based on the risk analysis and control is what you refer to as risk based testing. Also further to add here, we are looking at what exactly the different types of risk are. But before that, let's quickly deep dive and check it out what exactly my risk assessment is all about, right? So let's have a look here and try to understand what is risk assessment. Now, risk is a potential event, hazard, threat, or situation whose occurrence causes an adverse effect. A risk can be characterized by two factors, that is risk likelihood and risk impact. Now, let me just take you with a more better understanding. As and when a risk is identified, we sit down together to discuss and deep dive to, in order to assess the level of risk. And that's what is called as risk assessment. When we talk about the level of risk, it's basically a combination of two factors or two parameters, that is impact and likelihood. Where impact is considered as the severity or the, of course, the side effect when the risk happens or what could be the impact or harm to the user when it happens. And likelihood is more of like the probability of that event to happen. That means it certainly depends on the visibility of the features to the people in their process and at the same time how frequently that particular uh, item is being used, the frequency of use of that particular infected feature. So likelihood is determined by furthermore, if you deep dive, is the frequency of use and how visible that option is all about. So we determine the probability of that risk to happen. So both of these are two independent things and certainly would take their own level of determination and then put together as we combine them, we get the level of risk. So based on this analysis, you will be able to determine what is the level of risk. And these two factors express the risk level, which is level of risk, which is a measure of the risk itself. The higher the risk level, the more important is its treatment. So of course, you know that if the risk priority is high, we would do more testing there. And of course, everything will be highly prioritized. And if you have a risk level which is low, then certainly proportionally, pro proportionally you will be doing less testing compared to that of high, but even at the lower priority. So in simple words, a risk is determined with their level by having measuring measured the impact and likelihood related to that. Well, just a moment ago, we discussed that the risks are of two types, that is project risk and product risk. And based on that, uh, we will look forward to understand what exactly are those typical examples. So on anyhow, in the simple words, I told you product risks are related to the attributes of the functionality or non-functionality of a product, whereas project risks are related to those of the process. So in simple words, let's quickly have a look on what are those key examples which I can consider as project risk and product risk as well. So when it comes to software testing, one is generally concerned with two types of risk, that is project risk and product risk. However, just for your information, product risk is also called as quality risk. Okay, there's just the synonyms of product risk. Now, project risks are related to the management and control of the project. Project risk examples can include organizational issues like delay in work product deliveries, inaccurate estimates, cost cutting, etc. People issues like insufficient skills, conflicts, communication problems, shortage of staff, technical issues like scope creep, poor tool support, etc. And supplier issues, which means even the third party uh, delivery failure, bankruptcy of the supporting company, etc. So from these examples, we pretty much get the insight that there are several things within the project which happens as a activity. And if we have any kind of risk related to these activities is what we refer to as project risk. When it comes to the examination, uh, certainly the examination will not be hard codedly asking you these points only. They can give you any other example. All you have to judge is will this impact the project or the end user. If it impacts the project or the process, it is project risk. If it impacts the end user, then it is product risk. On the other hand, we do have product risk here. So product risks are related to product quality characteristics. Examples of product risk include missing or wrong functionality, incorrect calculations, runtime errors, poor architecture, inefficient algorithm, inadequate response time, poor user experience, or any sort of security vulnerabilities. Okay, so again, there could be any number of possibilities you can think about the product risk, but at the end of the day, all we talk about is the, the functional and non-functional attributes. Not meeting the requirement or a particular feature is not working is also seen as a product risk itself. So 
given that we are taking some examples that should give some insights but it can be anything what can be asked to you also to talk a little bit on the what could be the negative consequences if the risk happens like what is that i can talk about as an harm of a risk and why should i look forward to mitigate them prior to completion of the projects or prior to doing anything else right so the number one thing here we are talking about is product risk when they occur may result in various negative consequences which includes user dissatisfaction loss of revenue trust reputation damage to third parties high maintenance cost overload of the help desk criminal penalties and extreme cases physical damages injuries or even death so it depends on the type of product for example if i'm talking about automotive or aviation related products safety critical devices we're talking about people's injury and death as well could be a consequence but if i'm talking about simple products like applications and softwares people certainly will look forward to have a better quality in it if the functionalities computational algorithms are not working absolutely fine people would look forward to go for another vendor or another service provider which might be doing a better job so you may have a loss of trust reputation or even business sometime or if you have compromised with some of the regulatory and compliance requirements then you can even get into a legal sanctions or legal issues related to your product and organization sometime you even lose your entire brand name not just one particular product so it matters a lot that what exactly would be the impact of a particular risk and based on that we plan our set of activities in order to mitigate it however there's a whole bunch of discussion still remaining when it comes to the product risk analysis we'll talk about how exactly we mitigate it what are the steps we can take what are the approach we can follow in our next tutorial so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understand the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning